There's a number of ways that animal protein fuels cancer growth. The first is hormones. When you eat animal protein, you raise IGF-1, which is insulin-like growth factor in your body. An insulin-like growth factor, IGF-1, is cancer rocket fuel. It tells cancer cells to grow. If you eat anything from an animal, dairy, meat, fish, eggs, you are sending growth signals to cancer cells via all these hormones that exist in animal food. It doesn't matter if it's pasture raised, or farm raised, or a factory farm raised, they all have hormones. Whether they're added extra hormones in the feed or shots, or they never have a hormone injected ever. It's a living being, it's full of hormones. Hormones in animal food fuel cancer growth. Methionine is an amino acid that's very, very high in meat, and it's very, very low in vegetables and almost non-existent in fruit. Methionine is an amino acid that many cancer cells are dependent on to survive. The third way is saturated fat. Cancer cells like saturated fat for fuel, and there's multiple studies on saturated fat from animal foods fueling cancer growth. The fourth way is when you cook meat, you create heterocyclic amines and polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons which are cancer causers in meat when animal flesh uh, or animal fat are cooked at high temperatures. Bacon is an example that most people don't know, but processed meat, bacon, sausage, jerky, hot dogs, lunch meats, processed meats are a group one carcinogen. That's the highest level of evidence of any substance on earth in terms of the confidence that it causes cancer. Cigarettes, arsenic and bacon are all group one carcinogens. They cause cancer. Red meat is a group two, which means it has a lot of evidence, not as much as group one. So there are a number of reasons why animal food fuels cancer growth. And again, I don't come at it actually from a vegan perspective because I'm not a vegan. I eat a plant-based diet, but I do eat a little bit of animal food a few times a month. I might have some fish or eggs or something, but my diet's about 98 to 99% plant-based. My health journey went from healing cancer to once I was healed, I went down a lot of dietary rabbit trails, paleo, Weston Price, I went down all these holes and experimented with a lot of different diets because I was curious, I, I was interested in longevity. I'm cancer-free now, I'm alive, I'm healthy. How do I need to eat and live long-term? Being a raw foodist, it's not a healthy diet long-term. It's an amazing healing diet short term for detoxification and, and all that. But long term, there's no evidence. There's no healthy, long living populations in the world that are raw foodists or that are vegan. But there are very healthy, long living populations, the longest living, that eat a diet that's about 95% plant based, which we know from the blue zones, for example. It's kind of a long way of me saying my diet was geared toward longevity which means eating tons of plant food, tons of fruits and vegetables every day. When I was healing cancer, I was eating 15 to 20 servings of fruits and vegetables every day. And now I eat like 10 to 15 servings because I don't juice all day like I did then. I'm not a vegan. But having said that, small amounts of animal food, it's okay. Don't see a huge threat there. There may be some benefit or maybe it isn't enough to hurt you if it's less than 5% of calories. But for healing cancer, I think it's risky and it should be cut way back to zero or maybe a few times a month tops.